Hi everyone, my name is Ashley and I'm a victim advocate with Alachua County Victim Services and Rape Crisis Center. You might recognize me if you've been to Girls Rock Camp before and I'm just so excited to be joining you for this wonderful online camp experience and I just hope that we're going to have a really awesome week at camp. I'm here today to talk all about consent. So starting off, what is consent? So very basically, consent is another word for permission. So when we talk about asking for consent or giving consent, we're basically talking about getting permission for what can happen to your body, what can happen to your stuff, and even things like whether people can get a photograph of you. Uh, so consent comes from this idea that we all have different things that we're okay with happening to our bodies, different ways that we're okay being touched, um, and we're also all of different things that we're not okay happening to with our bodies and ways that we're not okay being touched. Some of us super love hugs, some of us hate hugs and would prefer that people stop trying to hug us in the hallways, okay? Or maybe you're like really good with certain people hugging you, but like you don't want randos hugging you or there are some people that you really don't want hugging you, right? But basically, everyone has different preferences with what they're okay happening to their bodies and also what they're okay happening to their stuff or even things like whether they're okay being photographed. And the only way that we can really find out if somebody is okay with any of these things happening is by asking them. We call this asking for consent. Now, most of the time when we talk about getting consent, we mostly hear about it in the context of romantic relationships, right? We mostly hear about it with thinking about asking your romantic partner what they're okay doing, whether they're okay kissing or holding hands or anything more than that. But when you think about it, consent is important in all of our relationships, not just our romantic ones. When we ask for someone for consent with things like being touched or using their things, we're sending them a signal that we care about them. We care about what they like and what they don't like. We want them to feel safe and we're going to respect what they say. So how do we know if we have consent? Is it something that we can just assume? When you think about it, the only way that we can really find out if someone's okay with us touching them or using their stuff or taking their picture uh, it seems really obvious, right? It's by asking. We have to ask somebody if we want to find out if they're willing to give us consent. But when you think about it, this can feel kind of weird, right? Like, it can feel a little strange to think about how you ask for consent in reality. Um, so let's say I'm thinking about I'm going to see my friend this weekend. Uh, this imaginary world pandemic is over. We're all free to hug our friends. It's going to be great. So I'm gonna see my friend this weekend. I really wanna give her a hug, but I know that I should ask for consent, but I also kind of am worried like, what if that sounds weird? How do I actually ask for consent? What words do I use? It sounds a little silly, but this is totally a skill that you can practice. You can try it out a couple times in the mirror, see exactly what you wanna say, what kind of cool, charming air you want to have, or, you know, just whatever feels most natural for you. So, uh, you and me, uh, what do you think about hugs? This is, like, really weird, but, like, what if, um, can I give you a hug? I heard all the, all the cool kids these days are hugging. How about, how about we try that? Oh my god, it's good to see you. Can I give you a hug? Okay, yeah, that's the one. Wow. Who knew that asking for consent could sound so cool, so inspiring. But really, I just want you all to know that it's okay if asking for consent feels kind of weird or awkward right now. You know, this is a new skill. Any new skill can kind of feel weird when you're first starting to use it. But the important thing is that if you practice, it gets more normal over time. Just in general, asking for consent, especially if it's with somebody that you really like or somebody that you don't know very well, it can feel really vulnerable, right? Um, just remember that this is really a way of showing somebody that you care about them and that's, at the end of the day, always going to be a good thing. So now that we've found an extremely natural, normal, not weird sounding way of asking your friend if it's okay if you hug them, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the definition of consent. So just as important as asking 
for consent is kind of how we ask for consent and really thinking about kind of the conditions that we make around asking somebody for consent. So like, when we're asking for consent, are we making this person feel like they have the opportunity to say no? Are we making it so that it would be intimidating for them to say no, or they would feel guilty if they said no? So those kind of things, those kinds of considerations all fall into a really important part of the definition of consent. So when we say that consent is getting permission, it's not just getting permission, but it's getting permission that is given freely, voluntarily, enthusiastically, and without any kind of coercion. Basically, it means that consent has to be a mutual agreement that both of you are actually really good with. This also means that even if someone says yes or doesn't say no, that might not be consent. Now we're gonna explore a little bit more about this by taking a look at a few different situations. Try to watch this and think to yourself, is this consensual? Is this a good example of getting consent? Now, normally when we do this exercise, my wonderful friend Jessica is there to do it with me, but sadly, because we are not able to hang out due to COVID-19, I had to get some special guests to help me out with this presentation. Hey Cheddar, can I, can I like borrow your cell phone? Um, no. I mean, I just, I just want to use it for a minute. I don't know, man. Come on, please. Um. Please. <sighs> please. I guess. Okay, thanks. So let's take a moment to think about why that might not have been an example of consent. So in this situation, when we think about it, right, Cheddar did eventually say yes to me asking to borrow his cell phone. But was that yes something that was freely and voluntarily and enthusiastically given? Probably not, right? I was kind of bugging him, harassing him. At the end of the day, it didn't really feel like he had the opportunity to say no, because when he tried to say no, I kept on asking him over and over and over. So this one probably wasn't consensual. Benny, um, can I, can I borrow your cell phone? Did you hear me? Can I borrow your cell phone? Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna borrow your cell phone. Thanks, man. So what about in this situation? You know, here, Benjamin, he didn't even say no. He said nothing. He didn't tell me I couldn't have his cell phone. But is not saying no the same thing as a yes? I think that we'll find in this case that's not consensual. Uh, hey Cheddar, can I can I borrow your cell phone real quick? No, no, I'm not comfortable with that. Really? Are are you sure? I just need to, you know, I thought we were friends. Friends let each other borrow their stuff. I just need it real quick. Oh no. Cheddar, I just you know, I thought we were friends. I, you know, if we can't I really need it right now if if we can't if I can't borrow it like I don't know or, or I don't know it doesn't feel like we'll be friends well I guess I want us to be friends okay thanks so once again Cheddar eventually said yes to my request to borrow his cell phone but was it really consent in this case I think it might have been more of a case of coercion Coercion is when you persuade someone to do something by using threats or violence against them. And using coercion means that consent can't really be happening, right? In this case, unfortunately, because I was telling Cheddar that, you know, we can't be friends, I was guilting him. I was also kind of threatening that if he didn't let me use his cell phone, I wouldn't be his friend anymore. Unfortunately, that means it wasn't consensual. Hey Benny, um, can I, can I use your cell phone real quick? Yeah, just don't call anyone. Um, yeah, I, I totally, I don't have to, I don't have to make any phone calls, definitely, no, um, I just wanted to use it to, like, text someone. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool, so texting's okay, alright, well, alright. Hey Jessica, what's up? <gasps> My minutes! So in my defense, this time Benny definitely said that I could use his phone, but I didn't end up using his phone for the things that he agreed to. 
So does that make it consent or not? Well, something to remember about consent is that you can place conditions upon it. You can say that you're okay with doing certain things with your body, certain things with your stuff, and you can put conditions on it and that's okay. And if somebody does something with your body or does something with your things or does something with your photographs that you didn't agree to ahead of time, that's still a violation of your consent. Remember, a yes to one thing doesn't mean a yes to everything. Hey Jenner, can I borrow your phone? I guess he's sleeping. Okay. Thanks, Jenner. So again, Jenner didn't say no to me borrowing his cell phone, right? He was fast asleep. He wasn't using it. But again, this is a case where this wouldn't be consensual. Cheddar, because he was asleep, couldn't consent or not consent to my question. He was dreaming. He, he wasn't thinking about whether I was going to borrow his cell phone. This shows us that consent is really also based on the person who would be giving consent's ability to even make decisions. If you're sleeping, he can't make a decision. Likewise, if you've been drinking a lot of alcohol or if you're on a medication that makes it so that you can't really make good decisions, uh, those might be some other times in which somebody might not be able to give consent. Hey, uh, Cheddar, is that Benny's cell phone that you've got there? Uh, do you think I could borrow it real quick? Yeah, sure. I don't oh, know. okay. Yeah, you're all right with that? Thanks, man. So this time I totally got permission to borrow Benny's cell phone. The problem was it wasn't from Benny, it was from Cheddar. And Cheddar doesn't have the ability, right, to give permission for, for Benny, uh, just in the same way that somebody else doesn't have the ability to give consent on behalf of us. Uh, you're the only person that can give consent for what happens to you and your body. Other people can't do that. The only times that we really have exceptions for this is when it comes to minors thinking about their health and safety, right? So your parents can't tell you that you have to hug your really weird aunt on Thanksgiving, but they can tell you that you do have to go to the dentist. So since this isn't one of those kinds of exceptions, unfortunately that means that that wasn't really consent. So just to recap, consent should be a mutual agreement that you come to with another person. It should be something where you both have entered into it voluntarily. You're not, not just voluntarily, you're both entering into it enthusiastically. You haven't been pressured or guilted or uh, coerced into agreeing to doing this. You're remembering that you can always change your mind, that you can set conditions on what your consent involves. Uh, remembering that you giving consent to something once doesn't mean that you're giving consent to it forever and ever. Other people can't give consent on your behalf and there are gonna be some situations in which somebody couldn't give consent at all. If you remember all of those things and you go into your relationships trying to honor those basic tenets of asking for consent and talking to your friends and family about how to have this kind of a healthy relationship, you all should be on a really good track. So thank you all for joining me and Cheddar and Benny as we talked about consent. I hope that you all learned a lot and that you have a really good rest of your week with camp. And thank you all for tuning in. Have fun.